everyone. Thank you very much for being back. This is Fear Buster and Lauren Rosenberg talking about fear, talking about how fear is impacting you in a day-to-day -day life. And today we have a special guest. We have Jane and Jane is going to talk to us about her unusual fear and how it's impacting her in her life. So hi Jane, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners, please? Yep, so my name is Jade and I live in Romford, Essex and um, my day job is children's entertainment. Um, I'm also known as Jelly Jade um, and I'm also a social media trainer as well. Excellent, sounds good. And um, how, um, so how did this fear come up? Do you want to introduce, to talk to our listeners about um, what is this fear about? What is this unusual fear that's not like um, you know, the everyday fear, like people talk about fear of spiders or fear of flying or, you know, um, yeah. or fear of, um, of feeling sick, things like that. But this is um, slightly different. Yeah, it's definitely an unusual one and uh, it makes for great storytelling on at the dinner table. Um, but I have a, an irrational, I call it an irrational fear of viaducts and archways. Um, not so much train tunnels as such, because I do go on the tube and things like that, but um, it's a specific kind of archway that makes me have panic attacks and the usual symptoms of, of a, a, a fear. Um, and Are you okay? I'm just going to stop you here. Are you okay to talk about it? Is that okay? Or do yeah, you yeah. your body when you talk about it? Or is that well, okay? I, I just want to make I, sure you're yeah. okay as we talk about it. Of course, yeah. So I do get quite sort of breathless talking about it but are i'm you, fine do you feel i know something now or do you feel something now or you're little okay bit, or little yeah? Bit, yeah you do yeah, my, okay my shoulders go okay so you know what um we're just going to do a little bit of um i want you to be very comfortable so you can talk to our listeners more so let's um if you allow me i can just put you in a better place a That's little fine. bit so yeah, cool. so you know as you started talking i noticed that um you know, listeners can't see you, but uh, I noticed that your body was getting tense and this is why I just stopped you before we go into the story. So I thought, um, just by thinking about it, where do you feel that in your body? What does that look like in your body? What's this tense feeling looks like? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, uh, what does it look like? I mean, yeah, it just, just scary, I suppose. Okay. I do feel it on my on my chest more. It's more upper body. Okay. When when I'm experiencing experiencing the fear in real life, it goes straight to my legs. Okay. So when I'm talking about it, it's upper half. And when I'm experiencing it, and I have to you know approach it and face it, it goes straight to my legs, probably all over. So but right now, just as we're going to talk about it what does that feel like in your chest what what is it like if you had to put a color to it this tightening feeling what color does it would, would it look like if you were Pro probably between red and black okay um mm -hmm. and it's quite uh, a breathlessness feeling as well so there might be a bit of dark blue in there too okay. so those colors and if you were putting a shape to it what color does it what shape would that be that tightness feeling just about started talking about it what shape would it be well huh, that's that's an interesting one i mean without thinking about an archway probably uh, uh, probably a circle um, that's interesting we'll go into this yeah. later but i think shapes has a very much um something to do with your fear so okay. probably maybe school i show you i don't know maybe like a lesson with shape and something okay is that something to do with it uh so i'm just going to make you a little bit more comfortable so that we can go into it more okay. for our listeners so what i would like you to to do is, is tell me what color would make you more relaxed what will get rid of this if you had to pick one color that would get rid of this feeling that's tightness in your chest what color would that be I'm torn between purple and orange. I find both those colors quite calming. Mm -hmm. So subconsciously we attract to the colors that we actually need to heal. So, okay, so if you want to take a deep breath and close your eyes and see this nice color, you said orange and purple. Purple, 
imagine this nice orange and purple going in. Imagine like a little, like um, a fast river going in, like an orange and purple river going in, lifting those colors in your chest that are making that are being like, you know, tightening. Just allow those colors to just almost make that feeling lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And as we do it lighter, just allow it to to just flow, to make that feeling lighter, to make it like it doesn't need to be there. Just um, notice what I feel like and just give yourself the permission to just see that color. And imagine this color going also behind your back and, and almost like a, you step into a bubble of that color, that orange and purple. So you just feel a bit more safe talking about it, that you're more supported, that you're not on your own talking about this fear. And imagine this orange and purple all along your spine, supporting you. It's always there to support you. And that way we can just go more into, you know, into the fear. But just to, just to remind yourself that you support it, that you're, you have this color that can push that feeling out that you don't want. And then take a deep breath into that color. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. And then we're going to talk to our listeners about this unusual fear. Thank you. I feel okay. Are you feeling a little bit more? Yeah, relaxed? yeah, fine. Yeah. Good? Excellent. So I just thought, you know, before we go into this fear, just um, always better if you, if you can uh, feel a little bit less of the intense feeling that this fear can actually do. Yeah. Uh, so, so um, I know it's unusual and probably a lot of our listeners haven't actually um, maybe even thought of this type of fear, but um, as a fear and phobia expert, um, and I have seen lots of different type of fears and, uh, you know, like I've had um, unusual fear of holidays. I've helped a lady oh. with fear of holidays, fear of stickers, fear of bananas, wow. fear of apples, um, fear of eyes. Somebody you know, oh. fear of eyes who wanted to wear contact lenses but couldn't because like, you know, contact with eyes. Um, so there's, there's, you know, you know, fear of apples to the point where you wouldn't even use um, any plate because the fairy liquid has, you know, apples on it or oh, wow. the smell of apple. So you're not, you know, you don't think that uh, you're the only one <laughs> you know, in the world. Everybody has a different type of fear. Um, yours is interesting because um, I haven't actually had, you know, I haven't worked with somebody who's got um, a fear of um, viaduct and, and arch and, and you said something really interesting you said something is depend is the shape and I think it's got something to do with early years something um, are you okay when you the shapes on a jumper or, or shape or, yeah. or on a, yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah I am um, I'm fine going under you know the, the shape itself, uh, say say somebody had one in their house, sometimes you get an, o an oval arch shape mm -hmm. in the house leading from room to room, that's fine. Uh, it's fine on, I like rainbows actually. Um, okay. <laughs> so it's not, yeah, it's very specific to trains. Um, okay, so it's got something to do road. with, okay. Because I, um, I helped um, someone who had a fear of patterns. So the oh. minute it was like circle patterns, um to the point that the person couldn't even look at somebody's face because if there was like um you know like um spot on their face or like freckles because they're circled or something yeah. it was so like so it was all like patterns so i was just wondering because you you mentioned the shape of the but for you it's still something like going under so it has yeah. to be so if you was like a, on a train, can you go on a train? Well, yeah, see now on the train that's fine because I am I'm in the train um it's it's a strange one because i kind of contradict myself sometimes because when i'm driving i know i'm in the car mm -hmm. but that's when it's worse if i have to drive under one but if i'm on a train the, and the train tunnel um if if i had to get off that train and walk through the tunnel that's where the fear is but if i'm in that train mm -hmm. i'm okay because you're protected and that's that yeah. you've got the train I still see you. them, obviously, as the train's yeah. going by, you know, out the window, but I'm not, I'm, I'm tense, but I'm not scared. So it's almost like you're, if you're in a train or on a tube and you know there's going to be, you know, this, this uh, sort of viaduct and, and, and you're going underneath, you, you have this protection because, you know, the train is protecting you. 
in mm. that sense. So, but if you had to walk on the, oh. would, would you walk yeah. on the or not? No, no, <laughs> no. I've I've done that. Um, I've I've had I've been in that situation before a couple of times, and I've just my legs have just gone to jelly, and I've just like just collapsed in front. I, I can't walk under them. I say I can't. I did I did try once uh, when I went to London on my own, and I I th some of the fear comes from um, it. I'm not knowing that the archway is going to be there. It's if it suddenly appears in front of me, that's the heightened part of the fear. That is where it's the most scary. If I'm walking along and I turn a corner and all of a sudden it's there, then I prepare myself to go under it and I can then stand in front and try and think I need to go under, I need to go under, but it takes a really long time yeah, to sure. go under it or I have to close my eyes and run under but it feels like that feeling of over it's over me mm -hmm. that feeling it's very it's like over empowerment I suppose mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if that's the right word yeah. for it, but I and feel uh, like it's just so have you um and have you ever done anything about it or have you ever sort of, of getting rid of the fear or I've spoken to a few people um I, I did speak to a hypnotherapist and um, we were going to do some work together and then lockdown happened. Um, but, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but what she did help me do was she placed something in my subconscious where, because I didn't know where the fear came from and never have. And some mm -hmm. people have said it might be past life and some people might have said it might be something when you were a child. But what well, I wanted do, to ask you, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Because yeah, that's fine. I'm very but, intuitive and, and I... I, I I am curious to know if you know how you were born. Ah. You didn't get stuck. Well, my mum has said this to me, and my mum said you was there was no trauma or anything like that. But I have managed to pinpoint it to a time in my life when I was twelve, mm -hmm. when actually my mum said that you wasn't scared of it before this situation, but afterwards, you know, going into my teenage years, that's where the fear came from. Um, it was going to, and I've only just remembered this, 20 years later, I was mm -hmm. going to a, uh, I saw a theatre show in London, and part of the act was um, a very famous actor performing, being really silly on stage, but he had this big screen behind him, and on the screen was this country road, and he had to interact with it, and he was pretending to ride a horse and things like that. But the screen got the video got faster and faster with the music it went really 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 quick um and it, the faster it got the quicker the road was getting and when it ended there was this loud bang and the image on the screen stopped and it was on a big black tunneled archway mm. and i remember my heart racing and feeling a bit you know this loud it was the loud noise that scared me more you know, mm -hmm. it caught me off guard, but didn't think anything of it. I've sh I've shut that memory off until about three or four months ago when I woke up one day and went, oh, my gosh, I think I think the fear came from that. It might not have done, mm -hmm. but I've only just remembered and remembered that image and remembered the loud noise and put the two together and turned it into something else. Um, my yeah. earliest memory with that, because I didn't realise that memory, but my earliest memory of being scared of an archway was when I went on a school trip and we had to walk under one, and, but there was no adults around. We were, How old were you at that time? Uh, so I was, it was a geography school trip, so probably 14, 15. Mm. That's a couple years after that, that show. Yeah, so um, usually um, a fear... Usually we look into from where you've got the symptoms or where you're aware of it. We look about two years before that, what's, right. what's happened in a person's life, because it okay. takes about two years for the subconscious mind to create something right, well, that, that would sense. tie it in. Um, but um, usually there's something before that, that put it on the line subconsciously. And then it just sort of suddenly there's a, something really big that brings it up. So the subconscious mind lives in the present time. So when something happened to us, 
um, even though people say, oh, it's, it happened 20 years ago and, and we, we can still be in it because the subconscious mind lives in the present time. So which is in the part that is quite good because it allows me to do the work and to go into the memory and change the memory or delete the memory or change yeah. the belief. That's great. But the other part is it's not great for the person if they have a bad memory or they created a wrong belief that okay. is dangerous and then yeah. they're still in it. So it's almost like um, whatever happened, you is in front of you every single day. And when you got the trigger, it comes up. But I was thinking, um, just as you were talking, um, I was wondering if you were born, if the, when you were born, you got stuck before coming out or there was, if there was something about birth or if mum, had an incident while she was pregnant or something because hmm. there is something I think there was something more to it in that sense that I think there was a precondition that that there's something there um and having to need this protection over you in that sense okay. so um so luckily you don't see those those bridges everywhere you don't see no. them on a day-to-day -day life <laughs> um but it's interesting that you even thought of um of going into a house and if it's just like a you know that shape or going through a door yeah. um because yeah. you're more aware of, of shapes and things uh like that so that's why i was asking like you know how are you are you okay to wear um like because i know I, I had a client who was scared of shapes so you know if if there was any type of shape that you would avoid maybe more like round that or that's really interesting no i don't I can't think of any time. I'm quite a creative person, so I always see shapes myself anyway. I always look at them and how I can sort of change them and, and you know, make patterns out of them and things like that. But mm -hmm. no, I'm definitely fine as far as I'm aware, mm -hmm. especially rainbows, which have an art shape. Yeah, um, that's what I, um, so that's yeah. like, um... I'm surrounded by them on my desk. I know you can't see them, <laughs> but uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> That's quite interesting because it's still the same similar shape, but yeah. it's all the colours. Um, I use a lot of um, colours to heal and to help people. Uh, like you know, at the beginning, I started just sending you a colour in order to make you more comfortable and and, yeah. and feeling yeah. more comfortable, and you could feel it and you could feel more supported. Mm. So it's interesting that you are surrounded by colours, and you know, and people, our uh, listeners, can't see you by your hair. What colour yeah. do you say? What colour? Uh, it's fuchsia. Fuchsia, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, okay. very bright pink, and I, yeah. obviously I've got mustard on to complement <laughs> the hair. So I do live by colour. So, so, so you know, for our listeners that can't see Jade, she has bright colours, okay? And it's interesting because bright colours uplift your mind. And I don't know if you subconsciously did, maybe, you know, you don't know why you got attracted to this colour, then some other i've got um you know clients who have who like having turquoise hair or you know yellow depending but so it's interesting to go to that color because it's uh, it, it's supposed to uplift and to brighten your mood so if we feel a little bit down um very often we can um you know i said wear brighter colors or look at brighter things um in fact you know, before um, COVID, uh, you know, um, shut to my, you know, the, the clinic and I'm doing everything online. But um, in my office, there is a, a painting from uh, my oldest daughter and uh, it's like bright colors. And it sort of hit my, you know, the people coming in because without even subconsciously, everything is sort of placed and, you know, there's a, there's a nice smell of lavender and wild orange to relax the, you know, the person coming in. And there's this bright, sort of um, painting with lots of different colors, but bright colors. And it's, all, it's, it's really there because I want to put colors in my client's mind so that when yeah. they come in, they feel supported and uplifted. Okay, because yeah. when you feel down or when you're anxious or when you feel in you know, your low mood, you have tendency of seeing everything in, in gray and black and white. You don't see yeah. colors. So it's interesting that, you know, people around you should be really bubbly and, uh, you know, just by, you know, it's like when you walk into 
a room if somebody is uplifting and very in a good mood they'll uplift everybody else yeah. and if somebody walks in complaining about something yeah. the whole energy of the room sort of changes yeah. so um so for our listeners that can't see you i just wanted you to you know to say I'm about <laughs> your you know so um but for me it's interesting as a color therapist that you went for those colors so uh because a lot has a lot of other meanings um yeah. so but um so how that fear um luckily you don't see it every day okay uh, you don't <laughs> you know it's not there you don't see archways and viaduct and uh, you don't see them every day um uh, interesting though that in a theater show was something i've i mean i love you know going to see play and uh, play and uh, i'm missing it at the moment because obviously yeah me too can't and uh, the whole world has sort of changed at the moment but um i uh it's not something that even in a play they usually you see so that was very specific it was yeah. very much uh yeah it was quite um my nan used to love taking me to the theater i think i'm the eldest child of three and um i think she just used me as a bit of company and, and back then i think it was the 1990s um we didn't have a you know we had a west end but it wasn't like it is today um and she just liked to reminisce i suppose her um her child and her teenage years and and if anybody was in the, the theater she took me um and yeah this was one of those it wasn't your typical west end show it was just very it was a bit of tap dancing there was a bit of singing songs from movies you didn't really know what to expect um when you watched it and i'm actually really surprised that i don't have a fear of theaters <laughs> i'm glad yeah. i don't um but i've obviously yeah associated you know that that incident and turned it into something really petrifying that I'm I'm absolutely petrified of. So it's interesting you're saying that you, you thought that the fear will go into theatre or maybe mm. plays or um but um the fear that we usually are scared of is never usually what we're actually scared of. Right. So our mind gets sort of redirected. So um and this is why um sometimes when people go in and and do some work on their fear, they very much work on the actual item or, or the symptom but it's actually not what's important it's what mm -hmm. it means behind that so so very much um i had um somebody who um used to be scared of dogs and it wasn't actually um a normal fear of dog because fear of dogs you know you clear the fear you you touch a dog and everything but mm -hmm. it was what the dog meant for her very much and it was and it had a much bigger meaning uh you know, there was um, something else that happened and there was in the scene that, some, that what, something happened that was quite scary for her. There was a dog and the fear went into, in, you know, went, it, because of redirecting, it went into the actual dog. So she thought she had a, a fear of dogs where it wasn't, it's what the, the dog re reminded her of the memory that was scary. Right. And that, so, so that oh, every time that she would see a dog, it would, um, it wasn't like seeing a dog like like she would see the dog like you know like you see a dog well you know worried about being bitten or or jumping or licking or things like that yeah, cool. she would just see the dog and then the memory would come up about what, what happened at the time that was traumatic yeah. and that would come up and so it was not so you know so it may not be so much about what this archway means for you it could be like at the time there could be a different memory but there must have been behind in the scene there may be um there may have been an archway or there may have been something similar yeah and then you became more sensitive to it so in that sense so um how does that how how does that come in then on a i mean i don't see archways every day uh, i know that where i live very near there is one and it's quite oh. an hour bridge and actually uh you know lorry's got to be extremely careful to go through because that's where yeah. they, can, they can get stuck you know so um but uh otherwise um just how does that how do you see it i mean where does that come in well it it, it started to affect my life more when i started to learn to drive because obviously i was expanding my journeys um 
and I realized that obviously I, I can't be causing an accident when I'm in the car so the fear got heightened even more because I think when you're walking you can control that when I'm in the car I have to not just I can't just stop in front of the archway and turn back round. I have to consider everyone else around me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and obviously things, you know, in the car that you can't control, like diversions, um, the sat nav taking you the wrong way, um, you know, get, getting lost as well. Um, yeah, that's you know, true, actually. Sat nav yeah. don't really tell you that there is. No, exactly, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> yeah. I was, I, you know, nobody likes getting lost in the car anyway. But if, you know, if I happen to get lost or a diversion happened, not only am I anxious about finding my way back again, but I'm also anxious to make sure there's no train lines or archways that I'm going to have to drive through. Um, so when I was started my party business, I, I just started to realise I wanted to expand where I was entertaining, mm -hmm. but I had to then check that I wasn't going through archways to get there because then I'd have to turn back around and go home again so, so how do you do that can you see it on google or, or can you yeah it? so I've started they good at <laughs> that <laughs> because um you could do street view on there and I would then I would do that I would program the journey in which is fine and then if there was any train lines that it covered you can see the train line so then you click <laughs> this is so intricate but I would That's click okay. where the train line is it would bring up the street view and that would tell me if it was a bridge or an archway or um it's or you know something else so then I could if it was an archway I would either find a different route um or I would just not take the booking which is very surreal um you know, as long as there's another way to get round, I would do the long way. I'd rather do the long way uh, than go under it. You know, if it costs so how long would um, okay? So if I was ringing you and say, okay, um, you know, I have quite a few children. I don't know what age do you do the parties up to? It's what four age to you... seven years. Four to seven. seven. Yeah. Okay. So um, so if I was booking you for a party, uh, Mac is and I are a bit older. I mean, quite older. I've got I've got five girls. So is that so but um if i wanted to book you would you what would be the sort process you would just instead of saying yes uh, i've got a booking i'm going to do this party for this child and you're just, you're just I know like, what? ask I, me for dress and uh... I yeah, so i would i would take it anyway i would take it and i would say yeah give me your address so before i sent off the invoice for a deposit i would tap your postcode into google maps Mm -hmm. first to make sure and then if there was a way round because obviously you've told me that there's an archway and you'll have to give yeah, me a right, right. Right. I'll check um but um if there's another way around I'll do it um but I would still take the book in but I would then have this anxiety over me knowing that the, the party's coming up um making sure that there's no diversions or road work so how far before would you feel this anxiety I would the, the minute I see that on Google Maps that there is an archway, mm -hmm. I would either call you back and say, I really can't do it. And I would probably, <laughs> I shouldn't say this to you, but I probably <laughs> would make up an excuse to say, I, I've checked the date and I'm fully booked, even if I'm not. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have done that before. Or I would just take the book in knowing that there's, there might be another way around it. And then I would probably go to my husband and complain and say, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've got to go through this arch, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge, pardon the pun, so to speak, nearer the time, mm -hmm. because I try not to worry about it in the moment, but it will be over my head. So even if it's a few months in advance or a few weeks or a few days, whenever I remember it, I'd get that lurch in my stomach and I would, I'd go, oh. You know, oh now, oh it's coming. You know, I need. I've, I'm going to have to do that. Um, I'll try not to worry about it until the day, but it will just come back into my mind throughout. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. It's, inter it's interesting that you, um, you know, it takes an enormous amount of. of it, it, it takes a enormous amount of time for you because obviously you got to plan it and look into, mm -hmm. which um, I, I use a lot of energy to clear fear. So it will make you quite tired. It will take quite a lot of energy out of you for, for that type. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I was also thinking as you were talking about um, parties, 
because I, I, I work with children and, uh, and now I've turned all my clinic online and actually kids are so amazing with technology and they actually really doing well online. And, but, um, have you, I came across with, um, children, um, a child who's scared of balloons. Ah, uh, yeah. Scared of, yeah. So they wouldn't yeah. even go into this. So the party, you know, the party entertainer will, will, will do things and then you've got this, this little kid who wants to come into the party and then see those balloons and then run out you know not really scared yeah. i don't know if you're aware of um especially as a as child in you know, a party entertainer you probably would um notice there's a few of balloons few of clowns uh, yes. i think clowns are really really not good at you know now nowadays yeah. where before they used to be the entertainer and they, you would expect a clown to come in and to entertain kids um loud noise kids yeah. can be really especially um you know uh, i used to be a special need teacher before i went into um into becoming a fear and phobia relief expert and um loud noise can really affect um children who are very sensitive to, to yeah that. And my son my son's yeah. very sensitive to loud noise actually very mm -hmm. um very sensitive hearing so yeah i can definitely relate to that one so, not so much uh, fear but he's very yeah just sensitive to it so if you do um party today is that the majority of the time is uh, do you think it's in people's houses or in a hall or it just depends it's, or it's a bit of both yeah um in the when you do it in a hall i'm more aware of the noise and the loud bangs and sometimes mm -hmm. my balloons have popped unexpectedly um yeah, so I, might, yeah. I might have caused the fear you you just <laughs> you don't know it's not it doesn't happen that often but um it's more echoey in a hall more it's hotter the floor's sticky and the balloons pop a bit more yeah, in people's true. homes it's not as scary i don't think it's not as there's not as much going on mm. you can control the, the sound around it but i'm fully aware that if i'm in a hall and i've got my i've got my music on a big speaker and it's really loud then you've got my voice over the microphone that's loud i'm a stranger you know not all the kids yeah. know who i am um, here i am making balloons on top mm -hmm. of that i have had a few parents say that their child is scared of or they've got a guest coming that's scared of balloons and sometimes i've had to pre-warn the child and they just they still come but they'll leave at that moment yeah mm -hmm. um, or the child just doesn't come at all um but i do try to I'm, I'm very aware of that and i try to give them a little bit of warning uh beforehand um and i just i don't blow them up as much as <laughs> you know i need to because then i get scared as well <laughs> i know that's what i'm saying it's like it's so interesting because we don't even realize sometimes, you know, like uh, I had um, somebody came and that was also very unusual with a uh, uh, fear of a particular color, uh, oh. fear, of, um, fear of purple. Wow. That was, uh, and uh, you don't think that some school uniforms have purple. Oh, so cool. it was quite interesting how, um, you know, one specific color can have a different meaning. Purple mm. very often usually is, is, is you know, calm, relaxing, and uh, and our listeners can't actually see, but uh, you've got a very nice, you know, wall behind you that is actually, you know, purple. Yeah, so, they wouldn't um, be able to come in my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so that would be, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, you know, I helped that child, but, uh, so that would, that would have been a problem, you know, walking in yeah. just like that. Yeah, of so, so don't, don't be, uh, you know, um, so Jane, this is, you know, your fear is, unique in a way because it's any fear is unique because it's 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 yours and you know people have their own specific fear in fact actually i always say it's not um it's better not to even think that it's that we that we have that fear we just talk about the the fear and not our fear because if it belongs to you it's quite hard to get rid of uh, yeah okay. it's better to to don't think that it's actually but they belong to you okay. but uh it is very different but it still has a big impact on you because it's yeah. taking a lot of time and also mm. uh, money in that sense because yeah. uh, it has an impact on your business. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Which is a shame and because... I, yeah, I, I, over the years, um, I've had to face the fear anyway. I can, I can picture three or four times where I've had to anyway. So it has, at one point, it really hit this... Um, it, it was really at this point where I was like, it's ruining my life. But it seems to have come back down a little bit and now it's it's manageable, 
mm -hmm. but not avoidable and I'm I am managing to cope with it a little bit better so I do test myself and I try to see if I can face it you know for if I go out on a, a day out to London or um, there's certain places I want to go but not quite ready but I there have been a few where I get my car um MOT'd I have to drive through an archway to get it there <laughs> yeah it's funny you mentioned that because the majority yeah. quite a lot I can think of quite a lot of garage or you know yeah. even I mean now that you're mentioning you know it's like it's like when you drive and you look for a specific car then you keep seeing that specific car yeah. now that you're mentioning uh, archways and I can think now there's a, a few more that I've seen yeah. around where I live yeah uh, and one is actually a garage underneath going underneath yeah oh, wow. <laughs> there oh, is one garage there <laughs> so that's funny that you're saying that but um so it shows how the mind works when you start thinking and, and concentrating on one thing you yeah. you then attract it okay yeah. that's why it's yeah. really important to have a very healthy mind it's very important to train your mind to look at the good thing and to to so that you wherever you look at you attract so the less you look at those things the better it is but um, it's a, it's it is unusual fear. Um, I'm pretty sure I can clear it. But because uh, so far I've cleared every every fear of, that I've seen my clients with. <laughs> but um, it's um, it does take a lot of, of time, and it does have it does it drains you in that, in certain ways. That that's sure. Um, and uh, and then. How did this business start it in like how did you go how did you get into this uh this well, church? Um, I, I started the business uh, it was one month after I gave birth to my second child, but I had been talking about it for about oh, maybe a year um because I worked at a nursery, so I was working with children mm -hmm. um and my dad is a dj and worked in the entertainment industry for all my life. So again, subconsciously, I think there was something always there, except I just didn't take that route straight away. It wasn't obvious to me. Um, but I had my child and my husband's a DJ too, so I'm surrounded by it. <laughs> and we just, there was a mum in the school playground and she said that she was having a party. Did I know any DJs? And I said, well, I've got my husband, I've got my dad. Uh, she said, oh, but I want someone to do party games. And I said, you know what? I can do all that. Um, you know, I thought I was, I'd never had any practice or any, so I, I can do that. Um, and I, I just offered to do the party for her. Um, I said, you, you know, I'll do it cheap, really, and I mean really cheap. Um, and um, I did the party a month later. Um, they thought it was great. But looking back, um, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was very scared of the microphone. I was scared to use that. Um, I, I couldn't control the children. You know, just little things that I can do now. Um, but you, all have to, you always have to start somewhere, don't you? Exactly. Um, That's true. Yeah. yeah. And I, but I loved it. I realised that I enjoyed dancing around, making a fool of myself um, and using my skills with children that I'd learned in my previous job. Um, and, and apply them and I, I just wanted some more control with my own money bringing an income in for my children my husband works anyway but I just didn't want to work for anybody else anymore yeah and you can arrange your your hours you can probably arrange yeah. your hours around your children and yeah. uh, and it has got a good side of it to be self-employed because you can arrange your timetable according to your children. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. I know I have one child who's quite uh, like uh, likes uh, doing parties, and uh, and she was actually she she was asked could she do a slime party for her for uh, one of the mum asked you know came up to me and say would your child who loves doing slime um, do a party for my for my kid for for my my daughter's birthday party so she said yes and then so I got her all the things and she really enjoyed it and it was quite funny because a lot of parents don't like using slime and all the messy things so you know yeah, that's me <laughs> yeah. so she really enjoyed it and uh I don't know if you do slime in your party but uh what type of no, party I don't, do you do um I know people that do and, and I think my children would particularly love it but probably not in my own home <laughs> yeah not sure <laughs> somebody else to do <laughs> so would you say um 
having a child entertainer is um, better to do it in, in a people home if they can, or, or does it make any difference if it's um, not or You know or... what, it depends on the person. I, I don't like really doing them at home because I feel quite restricted. Um, if I'm mm -hmm. going into your home, I don't know the size of it until I get there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that you get distracted by you know the child's bedroom the child's toys the garden it doesn't matter how good i am the toys would always win over a lady coming <laughs> in and trying to you know entertain for you so in a hall it's i prefer it myself um you know because and it's easier for the mum because she doesn't she just has to tidy up and then she goes home and, and that's it you know there's no yeah, extra true. no extra you do you do about. theme or you do how does that how I don't theme. I've got a particular set show, which is party games, magic, uh, party dances, a, a disco. Um, I come again, going back to the rainbows. I dress up as a rainbow um, mm. person, um, mm. and because uh, it's quite friendlier for the kids. Um, but I can theme particular things like you know the party games and some of the magic. And I reference, you know, if it's a superhero party, I've got all sorts of things for that. Um, if they want Harry Potter, I try and sort of theme a few things around that. But mm. what they get is a brightly coloured rainbow lady. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to entertain, yeah, the children. It's interesting like, that you're mentioning um heroes because I I when I work with children, I actually um you know when you have fear you lose your con you lose control. Mm -hmm. So um very often I use I ask them, you know, what's your what's what's the what do you need to get control? And and some some will say they need Barbie or they need, you know, Superman or they need yeah. so they so they pick you know, they own or, or the teddy bear or whatever hero or, you know, or mum or whatever they, they pick, but they pick a specific hero. And then we use that to gain the control back and gain the power and, and the safety and feeling safe. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, uh, so we have a similar way of, of, you know, you entertain them with this and I just clear the fear with it. So, <laughs> and, uh, and colors do have a big, big impact. Uh, and I find it really fascinating that you attracted by rainbows because rainbows are quite a lot of different colors and yeah. um and it's probably what your subconscious mind needs in order to calm your energy field which is quite will be quite um you know like uh the energy field will be quite vibrating because if you're not calm because there's always this underlining behind that so you yeah, worry about you know having that so it will be balancing it uh, and okay. overbalancing it. So that's why the colors will be even more. You would use the colors even more to, to push that, that, you know, worry less in that sense. So that's how the subconscious mind will work in that sense. Yeah. And attractive um, as well. I literally, if you could see my desk, I could turn the camera around, but it's not going to help your listeners. But uh, <laughs> I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rainbow things. And there's probably more I haven't even counted. Um, just colour everywhere and I yeah. thought it was because it goes back to my childhood and I just want to relive my youth again <laughs> um, but, and that so might... as a as a colour therapist I would say um you know it, it's what your mind needs in order to be able to function and, and in order to be able to feel more calm so that you you're repressing you you're putting in the whole anxiety and the energy vibration because um I, I use energy so we use like a frequency and energy frequency that we we go in the vibration of energy that we go in so if we quite anxious then we wouldn't find subconsciously a solution until we actually work into the underlining and, yeah. and actually and, and, and until you actually decide to do some some work and you know so subconsciously this appeared to and especially it's interesting that it's around your desk because this is where you work and this is yeah. what you know and uh if you get a, a booking this something will trigger and then or automatically go into that automatic system saying i need to check this and i need to check that and make sure i don't know if i'm going to say yes straight away so those colors are surrounding you are yeah. actually your solution at the moment subconsciously okay. Yeah. So uh, you may see it as, you know, childhood and it's nice and you like them. And, but subconsciously, um, they, for me, they mean much more than that. They really mean 
your solution and that yeah. is what's supporting you and this is why you know the colors that you're wearing your hair all this is is helping you and supporting you and okay. that's the solution that you find at the moment so there's, there's i'll take that that's fine it's a nice one to have <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's a nice you know it's a nice solution um and it's it's nice and it's bright and and it, it always colors always help to heal so you know so it's always interesting um to see that um I wanted to ask you, how does the, um, you know, the situation that we're in at the moment in the world, how does COVID has impacted on your work and on your fear? And uh, what, how does that, how does that come? Well, um, it's the, uh, it's a strange one. Um, I had to convert from physical parties to mm -hmm. uh, virtual. Uh, which aren't quite the same um but i've you know i've done quite a few to tide me over um i did a, a live story time on my business pages on on uh, social media and it did it went viral so considering i'm sort of based in essex i was performing for scotland wales isle of wight all over the uk so excellent you know, in one way it did me a favor but in another yeah. I, I mean i don't know how i'm gonna obviously convert those people into uh, customers in the future but um, at the moment I'm literally waiting on my trade union that I'm part of they're going to confirm what it is we're allowed to do because government guidelines are really unclear um, I think you know I think no one knows really um, it's all new for everyone it's completely out of the blue it's not something that we expected at all uh, the party entertaining world has completely change you know the distancing the the way we can we can socialize uh and this is very much about adapting and how much can we adapt and that's that's really where the fear comes in too because yeah, of course you know, well got to, I, I think yeah. it could have gone either way i could have just shut everything down and cried yeah. for four months um or i could have um which yeah i am currently trying to do is get back out and and uh it's i think it's it's like a grief because i've worked for eight years doing it and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you and you you then got to contend with all the emotions that come with that That's obviously true. i haven't had to go out and then drive under archways and, and i haven't had to deal with that side of things um but i would give anything <laughs> to do yeah, that to do it now it's, it's strange <laughs> isn't it? you know just um just to sort of, um, you know, just I know some some members used to complain like uh, having to do the rota, having to get up and drive, yeah. you know, and being stuck in a, in a traffic. And now they, they, would, they would love to be able to be stuck yeah. in a traffic, dropping their kids to school. You know, this is yeah. like, you know, so yeah, everything sort of changed. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I also had to, I, I used to do much more face to face. I did have a little bit of clients online especially abroad uh but um uh i've now turned everything on uh online and uh kids sessions are really good you know they they really they know the technology they know they they and i also started um doing um group online uh emotional well-being for children so because i wanted to make sure that um there is something uh out there so that kids can just hop on every monday I have, uh, you know, uh, I used to do it for half an hour and then kids were so relaxed again, they were about to fall asleep. So oh. when I did it, so now I had to adjust it. So I do 20 minutes online and, uh, and parents can just register their kids and they go online and, uh, and the kids really love it. And I use, you know, teddy bears and magic and I just put my therapy inside without them realizing and um and I feel so so relaxed afterwards so this is my sort of adapting in that sense so I just so so I've opened um online classes um and and also I do one-to-one -one online but I've I've also sort of changed everything and did online and I, I um I'm also a Reiki master so that used to be you know and my client coming in and very relaxing and lying down letting me work on them and then obviously i can't do that so but um i've turned it around and, and i'm doing reiki distance reiki healing and i can send the reiki true distance healing and uh and my client seems to be very happy and uh, and they feel it so so yeah. the, it's all about adapting and how you can change things um so but yeah i mean um 
you know, just two days before when they announced the lockdown in March, I, I launched my book, my first book that I've oh. written about my, my story and, uh, and about my, my late daughter. And, uh, and then the lockdown happened, so the printing got stopped. And, oh. and then, so we did the Kindle on Amazon, but then I couldn't really have the launch and I've never had the, the book launched in that sense. So now the book is, is on Amazon and is, is there and, and it's available. But it's a bit strange because, you know, you work on a project and then suddenly you, you know you want to do a launch and everything and then things change. So it's well, so much I, about... Yeah, I can relate to that because with my other business, I, um, I launched on... I had this whole build up. I had uh, an early bird thing and I launched an ebook. Never done one before either launched it on the 1st of April an hour later unfortunately I, my dad passed away from the coronavirus oh god and yeah so I had to stop everything I had a launch an online launch party I had um I was selling out of the early birds so then I had to sort of up the price and set it you know normal and all this was going on and then life changed and I had to just stop mm. everything um and it makes you I think you need, obviously it's a, it's a tragedy, but it, it, it helps you understand how to adapt to life and to change because nothing's set in stone. You know, I just thought I was going to wake up that day, launch a, an ebook, it was going to fly, which it was doing, um, mm -hmm. but then it was literally just pulled from underneath me um, and that was that. Um, and also you've had to have to go through grief and, yeah. and unfortunately I'm sorry to I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your your dad mm -hmm. uh and uh and also the way with covid a lot of people were unable to go to funerals and uh you know the whole the whole and, and not even you haven't even seen people to for them to send their condolences obviously they've yeah. done it online but we you know in a normal circumstance we would be hugging and have people around us and you yeah. know we, we haven't we haven't grieved yet you know we've done the processes that we were supposed to do but we're still in our homes trying so you're to very brave to let me interviewing you today you know I was fine. <laughs> with it. but um it's true you know like um i mean my my uh my daughter passed away four years ago and we at least we were lucky in a sense that we were able to have, you know, the funeral, uh, over a thousand people actually came wow. to the funeral. So at the time we didn't think it was a privilege, but now looking back, this, even just, this was a privilege because, you know, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, no one can, I didn't privilege that is, that is, um, you know, I, I, that's a, that's an interesting word to use on a situation. So, you know, terrible, um but it's as much as you know because now people had to do it on zoom they wouldn't even be able to you know so there's lots of, of uh, so at the time obviously i mean i don't wish it on anyone and i wouldn't want anyone to experience what we experienced but looking back even just this was not taking from us you know in that sense so and what this virus is doing is isolating you can't be there for the person you you, you can't be there at the funeral or you know everything is on zoom so that makes it really even harder on the grief in that sense. Yeah. So, um, Which I'm sure we will um, deal with at some point. I you mean, may want to read my book. It may help you in yeah, certain yeah. ways whenever you're ready. Uh, who, I did it in a way. I actually did it in a way so that you don't have to read the first part if it's too sad. Uh, you, can, you can read the, you know, the second part, the healing part and the DIY help tools instead of reading the, the story that is sad because obviously I can't avoid the fact that this is where it's going to be but uh this is how I did it but um but let's go back to the fear um how would you could you imagine your life without this fear yes I I have imagined it without good fear. I have imagined myself just walking through uh, driving through on my own, uh, in particular on my own, because I have had friends in the car where I've had to drive through, and it's it's easier with them in the car because I've got okay. that support. But if I'm on my own, the panic is worse. Okay, but what would it be like to not have that fear at all? How different would it be? Gosh, a, a relief. Mm -hmm. It would be a relief. And my, I think my confidence, although I'm quite a confident person anyway, mm -hmm. I think you can, you can never be too confident, I don't think. And 
but I think it would make my confidence even more, not in a cocky way, but mm. I could see myself, it's as if something's weighing me down. Yeah, sure, because the, it's a lot of, it, it's tiring to have to yeah. analyze everything and check everything. And yes. uh, I mean, you've got a technology nowadays, so that's easier in a way. So but great for is... Google Maps. I don't know how <laughs> I would cope but without, it is... I rely on it a lot, you know. Yeah. But it is it is difficult, and it would make it you know even more difficult in that if you didn't have the technology of of that. So um, so one day, if you feel like uh, you know getting rid of this fear, you know where to come. I know how to do it. So I'm definitely I would love to do, to do that. But at least you find a way of you know it's not something that you see every day. It's not, but it's important to understand that it does take enormous amount of energy out of of you and and the, the first way of 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 going back to to not having the fear is to, if you can already imagine yourself what it will feel like to not have it that's already the beginning of the journey to not have it that's really already good um what would you say to uh listeners about um what piece of advice would you give them if you had to, you know what's what's something that that or have you got maybe a a favorite quote or something that you would say that they you know that's important I've got to quite you. A few favorite quotes. Most of them come from um, song lyrics because I'm a big music lover. But um, I would say, um, oh, I've actually got it tattooed on my arm. The show must go on um, because oh. when mm-hmm. I and it, and it comes back to my fear because when sometimes I don't have a choice but to just get on with it mm-hmm. um, and, and get over it. You know, it's obviously not as easy to get over it, but sometimes I've just got to do it. So I'll, you know, I'll remember the show must go on. You've got to keep going even when things are tough. And it's it, exactly what you've, uh, you've experienced. And unfortunately, yeah. many of people, many, many people out there would, you know, feel uh, what you've experienced because uh it is uh it's not something that you expected and unfortunately this virus and you know this, this covid is taking just, so many life and, and yeah i think my mindset over the the last few years um has turned into a more positive thing you know i want to help myself mm-hmm. i want to be better i want to um get over a fear and uh, or, or manage the fear and um, but also yeah when life happens you still got to pick yourself up and carry on because mm-hmm. you are still yeah. I like, I like, I like actually uh, what you said. The show must go on. Um, it's interesting. It is good. Just be careful that you uh, still do some work on yourself. That you look oh. after yourself because you know you need to not just show out there to everyone that you're okay and then behind you know sort of you know crash yeah, down. Not- you know, <laughs> yeah. Behind uh, those doors, I. Yeah. I- take time for myself i promise so you know it's perfectly okay to cry and to to crash down but it's it's learning how to get back up that's really important uh i always i've uh, i think i've always got um i i i keep i never give up i always try to find a solution and, and yeah. always keep going and this is my my thing probably that um, this is why i call my book how to move forward when the unthinkable happen but um but I like, you know, the, the show must go on, but just be aware, just still, you know, you are important and you need to look out to yourself in that sense. But that's good because it does give you the strength to, you know, to pull yourself back up and to push yourself and to go up and it gives you that energy to actually goes, goes on. So, um, Jade, where do people can, where can they find you if they want to book you online and hopefully in the next few weeks hopefully uh Thank you'll you. be able they could they'll be able to have you in their in their home or or in a hall uh where can they find you so uh, my website is party with jelly that's as in the wibbly wobbly jelly uh, jellyjade.co.uk um, and i am all over social media so i'm on facebook and instagram they if you just type in jelly jade into the search bar i'm there I've got bright pink hair. You can't miss me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Excellent. So, and, uh, and, you know, whenever you want to address that, this fear, I know it's not that urgent because it's not something that you can see every day, but uh, yeah. it will, you know, hopefully you'll be able to, to 
start your business again and you're going to be out there driving so and um, you know where to find me uh, but thank you very much for sharing your fear today because i know it's not easy to share and also we're very sorry to hear about the loss of your dad and you. and uh, you know um we wish you um only good news that and strength to carry on and i hope that you know the party uh, world is going to be able to reopen at some point um so thank you so much for being and sharing your story with us and to our li listeners and um looking forward to meeting you another time and maybe and we can do an interview once the fear is gone <laughs> if you ever want to do that um so but thank you very much this is um fear buster uh, by lauren rosenberg talking about fear and how fear has an impact on day-to-day -day, um, life and how we can move forward without fear and um, feeling much more lighter. Thank you very much for listening and uh, you can hear or, list or find my details more on www.fear-busters.com. Thank you.